Today's My Thoughts Monday is brought to you by Gym Aware, the leading tool when measuring performance in the weight room. Guys, VBT is all the craze right now. It's a hot, sexy topic, although it's something that's been around for a while. And the man who wrote the book on velocity-based training, Brian Mann, has called the Gym Aware the Rolls Royce when it comes to velocity measuring devices. Guys, the ability for you to shoot all your information right up into the cloud and store it right away is enough for, for me right there to, to make sure that this is something that I had in my weight room. Putting things together with instant feedback as to how the reps are being performed. On top of that, with the x-axis correction, so you don't have to necessarily worry about direct positioning when you're performing the exercises. Tying that in with the visualization of everything and the ability to allow the athletes to compete. Make this an absolutely stellar tool and something I couldn't recommend you having in your weight room enough. Hop on over to kinetic.com.au today and see everything that they have to offer. Hey everybody, if you enjoy the podcast and the content it provides, be sure to hop over and check out the community. The community is an exclusive members website that is just an extension of what we do here in July at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar. What it is is a combination of video lectures, a coach's corner with your Monday morning take-home information, and a forum where you can talk about anything and everything related to the field of strength and conditioning. In the community, you'll find content added each month from some of the top practitioners in the world, ranging from PhDs to high-level coaches, bringing you exactly what they're doing with their athletes or their research at the present moment. On top of that, an additional discussion by coaches bringing you that Monday morning information, things that you can add to your training program right away. Tying that in with the opportunity to discuss with coaches around the world in the forum on anything and everything from the topics addressed in these presentations to whatever you're seeing in your daily life as a coach. If this sounds like the right thing for you and your staff, go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com community and try it out for 48 hours for just a dollar. If you like it, you're signed up, ready to roll, and you're jumping into all the great content added each month. If not, feel free to go ahead and cancel at any time. No questions asked. We're really excited about what we're building in the community and hope you are too. Go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and check it out today. Hey, what's up everybody? Um, I'm Jay DeMeo and welcome to this week's edition of My Thoughts Monday. Today we're going to talk about something that, that's really kind of been thrown around and discussed in multiple ways in our office of late. And that is making sure that your plan B can be a plan A. Uh, and what I mean by that is that we're going to get into a lot of situations where we are going to need to be adaptive and we are going to need to make sure that we have kind of a, a, a countermeasure to incorporate to keep plans moving the way we want them to go. Um, and in our profession, we're, we're one, for the most part, of coaches who really pride themselves on being organized and having a plan and, you know, having things meticulously periodized out and specific means and measures used for specific things at specific times of the year. And, and there's a lot of times where I think that our inability to have a preset plan B for when things can go wrong in a multitude of areas uh, may be something that limits us a little bit. I'm going to give you a few examples of that. The first would be if something fails to work. So what I mean by that is we have a team on campus who, we have a ton of teams on campus that require breakfast and want breakfast to be part of what the team does together, almost as like a modified training table. We don't have that, uh, but, but as something like that, you know, some Schools call it breakfast club. Some people have different names for it. But we have different teams that check in for breakfast. We also know that at an institution where academic rigors are very high, um, and with this generation, there, there are some people that just they don't do mornings well. So now you have to be prepared for this to, to really not be as successful as you'd like. So what are you going to do if kids don't show up? What are you going to do when it starts to become kind of a hassle where, where they now are maybe combative is not the word, but I, I, combative in a way 
because they don't want to get up. Um, because they're already getting up for study hall and lift and, you know, maybe individual instruction in their non-competitive season in the morning. So maybe they just are fighting the fact that they need to get up an hour earlier. Well, maybe having a plan B of, okay, we know we can give them hand sandwiches and a bag of things that we can provide them with a, a pretty good breakfast on the way out. Having that plan in your back pocket, ready to go, organizing it however you may, may end out saving issues and at least eliminating them from not having anything at all if the first, pro, if the first plan doesn't go according to plan. Um, another example is like safety and weather, right? You know, we have like one real hill, quotes, that I would say that we would use to run hill sprints if you're looking at it as a speed development standpoint. Issues arise. It rains. Construction, because they're always doing construction on our campus, as I'm sure many of you deal with. Um, but what are you going to do? Are you just going to scrap it? Are you just going to say morning off? Are you just going to say, well, we'll just go do something completely different? Um, or are you going to have a secondary plan that is going to allow you to continue to move in that same direction? So if you're looking at it as, you know, acceleration work, like you can look at with hill sprints, or are you looking at it as Vallis talked about here with mitochondria, uh, mitochondrial hyperplasia of the type 1 fiber, or type 2 fibers, excuse me. Um, are you doing something or able to find something that you can do to elicit the same adaptation? And can you have that prepared readily so that you know what you're going to? You know, the same idea could be said for states of readiness or fatigue monitoring through practice or whatever it may be. Are, do you have a plan B set? I mean, in those situations, you, you kind of need like a C and a D too, right? Like to be really ready, but we can talk about that another day. Um, do you have these secondary and tertiary plans set if you're not in a specific situation where it can be successful, it can be safe, it can, it's what the game demands for that student athlete at that present moment. You know, like, are, are those measures being taken care of prior so that you're not scrambling and losing your mind or losing a session because you don't have plan B prepared? Now, Crazy things happen, and I'm not saying that you can't just sit there and have a, a fun workout because bad things happen, and you, you can't do what other things would be done because of whatever, but I'm just saying that we'd probably be better off having that prepared prior, just so we know, all right, well, if we can't do A, we can definitely do B, and we can do it in this location because it's always available, yada, yada, yada. The third and final one is when it comes to resources. And, you know, this is something that, you know, looking at anything from uh, renovations and building new facilities to, you know, like I just said with weather, you know, understanding what your limitations may be in your institution. Every school in America does not have a practice facility. Every school in America does not have an indoor facility. So when things happen... We need to have that plan B, but it has to obviously be within the resources that we're allowed. Going back to hill sprints, if you don't have a spot inside where you could do resisted running with sleds, or if you don't have sleds, obviously that wouldn't be a great choice. Um, so making sure that you're doing what the game demands within the resources you have. The other part with that is looking at renovations and things, you know, that... Uh, that we are sometimes fortunate enough to be part of, and that is upgrading to our facilities. If you're in a big renovation, part of it, right, and most of these occur, at least in the times that I've seen, around sports medicine. If you've ever watched any do-it-yourself network or the Home and Garden channel, you know that every renovation has some sort of wrench thrown in the middle of it, right? Things are never on time. There's more money that needs to be involved. I mean, obviously, for TV, it has to happen or the show would suck, right? So there has to be some sort of 
crazy thing that goes on and all of a sudden, oh, the house is gorgeous. But anyway, back to the topic. Um, you have to know that that's going to happen for you, right? And you also have to know that if they're going to pick between strength and conditioning and sports medicine, when they're going to start to say, we need to take money away because we're losing it in these other things, you better believe it's going to be from us, guys. I mean, like, let's be honest here. They're not going to take away from the, the medical staff. They're going to take away from us. So when you're putting these things together, obviously you have your dream level, but level B should be exactly what you need, right? So like when they have to start taking away from the, the perfect room that would be absolutely fantastic and there would be like bells and whistles everywhere, you need to make sure that when they have to start taking things out and moving money in different ways, that the room is still 100% exactly what you would need so that you don't ruin your program. If you only start here, now you're looking at sacrificing what you need to do with your student athletes, right? So you need to start above and beyond what you have so that plan B is your plan A. Let me know what you think, guys. Just a few things that I've been thinking about a lot lately and, you know, things that we've been talking about here. Um, a lot of these ideas are not mine. Shout out Scott Brink. Shout out Beecher Porter. Shout out, you know, rugby strength coach Kira Wenham Flat and Anthony Carney for bouncing things, talking things, and, and rapping about some of this stuff with us. Um, hopefully this helps, and hopefully you guys are lucky to be in situations now where things look seamless and you look like you're, you're the person that's ahead of the game and has the plan ready to rock and roll. Um, even more so, hopefully you're already doing this and I'm the moron who's just catching on here in April of 2018. Hope you guys have an awesome week. We'll be back next week with another My Thoughts Monday. We will see you then.